Hi and welcome back to another video, also rather spontaneous video about the like cooking up drama right now about AMD Ryzen 7000 CPUs dying, especially or like specifically Ryzen 7000X 3D and also in combination with Asus mainboards. So you can find a lot of like information and news out there on like Tom's hardware on WCCF tech about like Ryzen 7000X 3D CPUs and mostly dying on Asus boards. So. Just looking at this, it seemed quite worrying. It's not quite unusual that CPUs die, but if you look at like the type of damage that we can see, it's a pretty unusual damage. Because if you look at the backside of the PCB, you can see this like, like bulge on the, on the PCB and to get this kind of PCB damage, you need a very high temperature, which is like that is completely unusual to get like a temperature in this region that allows this kind of PCB damage. Then reading through Tom's hardware news, I could also find that also it seems to be like an MSI board is affected. And then very interesting, I found this case with this 7700X running on an ASRock board. And at this point, I had to ask myself a question. I mean, we're not looking at an ASUS board and we're also not looking at an X3D CPU. So all kind of theories around ASUS BIOS and X3D CPUs doing something weird with the cache and like CPU core voltage didn't really make much sense because both didn't seem to be the case here. One reason why I also decided to shoot this video is because I was quoted multiple times on several news pages because I also had two topics of dying AMD Ryzen X 3D CPUs or like one non X 3D and one X 3D. So the first case is when I was traveling to Asus in Taiwan and that is actually a case I would completely exclude from this topic because I deliberately killed the CPU because we were increasing the core voltage to a level that you would never see on any kind of daily usage. No matter if you load XMP or like Expo or whatever you're doing, you will not see like 1.5 volt and above core voltage on an X3D CPU if you don't do it by yourself. So that's the case I would like completely exclude from what we're looking at. But then again, Three weeks ago, we had this CPU sent in by a user, his name was Eric, and this 7900X got so hot on a Gigabyte Aros Master board, so again, not an Asus board, that it like, got so hot, it unsoldered itself. You could see, you can check out the video, that solder was basically dripping out between the PCB and the IHS, and it got so hot that it also killed itself. And we will look at this case again in a second. Generally, I also want to add that it's a very interesting thing that pretty much every generation of hardware at the beginning when something new comes out, like for, for example now with X3D CPUs, there is always some kind of drama like with 12 volt high power or with RTX 30 gen. We had the cap drama and yeah, it's always easy to jump on the drama bandwagon and just create some kind of content just for clicks and something without actually adding some content to it. And that's not what I'm trying to do. So I just want to highlight that, yeah, sometimes if I don't have information, I rather stay quiet. That's usually why I don't do like videos about it, for example, with 12 volt high power. But here, this could actually be quite interesting. I also want to highlight that Steve from Gamers Nexus, and I talked to him at a weekend, he is already working on this topic also very much in detail. They have access to a broken CPU and they send it to a failure analysis lab, which should be very interesting because they should have a professional insight to what kind of damage happened to the CPU. Not necessarily how it happened, but what kind of damage we can see. So that should be very interesting. We will definitely wait for that. Going back to the Reddit and Asus drama, Obviously, it was kind of odd that if you, for example, check out the X670E Hero and go to the BIOS download section, all of the BIOS prior to the one from last week are gone. Like they're not available for download anymore, which is kind of odd. And because I could already find a lot of conspiracy theories about this on Reddit as well, and I mean, it's, it's really weird. I just reached out to Asus and asked for an official statement. That's the statement I received from Asus. The EFI updates posted on Friday contain some dedicated thermal monitoring mechanisms we've implemented to help protect the boards and CPUs. We removed all the BIOSes for that reason and also because manual vCore control was available on previous builds. We are also working with AMD on defining new rules for AMD Expo and SOC Voltage. We'll issue updates for that as soon as possible. Please bear with us. Raj from ASUS. 
The most interesting aspect about this entire statement is probably the fact that they go in detail about AMD Expo and SOC Voltage. So we will get back to that in a second, but first of all I want to transfer over to Igor's lab because I also Skyped with him in the morning and we had a discussion about the entire topic, especially because we were looking into the pinout map to see what kind of pins were affected by the damage on the PCB. And if we look at a picture with the overlay to see what kind of pins are affected, we see that most of them are VDDCR, so basically the core voltage. Those are the red pins and the ones next to it, well, the pads actually, are all ground pads. We also speculated a bit about what kind of causes sound plausible or like which kind of causes we would like exclude. For example, we think that just pure contact pressure to the pins didn't really make sense. That happened in the, in the past, like not with the Ryzen 7000 CPUs, but with different CPU generations. But especially looking at the PCB damage doesn't really make sense. To me personally, it would just make sense that for whatever reason the temperature protection is not working in this state. So the CPU dies for whatever reason and the death either causes also the death of the temperature protection or it was not working in the first place. And then the mainboard keeps feeding current to the CPU cause it, causing it to reach like incredible temperatures. Because I know that from experience doing die shots we have to heat up CPUs to like 300 to 400 degrees Celsius to like remove the chips from the PCB. And only I would say 250 degrees Celsius plus we can see those kind of like bubbles or whatever underneath the PCB that is like bloating and like these temperatures are temperatures where the t CPU has been dead for a long time like there's no way the CPU can survive these temperatures and if we look at the case of the 7700X that died on the ASOC board one interesting fact is that it happened pretty much in the center of the PCB and even though if we go back to the image from Igor and like the overlay of the pads this should be again VDDCR pads for core voltage. But if we look pretty much on the front side, this would be the area of the IO die, not of the CCDs that contain the cores and also the 3D cache. Well, in this case, it's a 7700X, so there is not even a 3D cache. So all these kind of different failures make it a little bit difficult to narrow it down. But then again, if we look at the ASUS statement, which says SOC and also EXPO, it's getting quite interesting and they're not talking about core voltage which also kind of makes sense because we see different failures on X3D and also non X3D CPUs and also if we check out what actually the Reddit users did none of them overclocked their CPUs they're pretty much running stock and from what I can see all of them had Expo enabled and Expo like loading higher memory speed also usually increases SOC voltage because SOC voltage or like a higher SOC voltage is required to run stable higher memory frequencies. And now you might remember the CPU I was talking about earlier, the one that I had three weeks ago, the one that got so hot that it unsoldered itself. And like talking about all of this and like going through all the Reddit posts and everything, and then eventually realizing that it might be about SOC and not about the core voltage, it also means that it's not about X3D, but it's about Ryzen 7000 or might be in general. And then I inspected my CPU again more closely, like the one I received three weeks ago. I found something quite interesting. So as you can see on this CPU, I just didn't notice this because it's like a rather small damage compared to the other one, but it's exactly the same type of fault. As you can see, like in, in this area right here, you can see that there is this bulge again. Yeah. So I just didn't see it because it's like such a small damage you can only see from an angle but it's exactly the same type of damage. To sum it up we not only have X3D CPUs but also the 7700X from Reddit. We have this 7900X. We have boards confirmed by ASUS, by ASRock, by Gigabyte because this was also on Gigabyte board. We have at least according to Tom's hardware also an MSI case and all of them have in common that they were running Expo. And for example, right next to me, I have a Crosshair Extreme board. I'm running a little bit older BIOS. It's 0922 or 0902, but stock, it's using about the 1.02 volt for SOC voltage. And whenever I apply Expo, which is 6000 C, like 38 or something on this kit, 
yeah, it's applying about 1.34 to 1.36 volts on SOC. On this setup, I'm running a 7600 non-X simply because it's the cheapest uh, 7000 CPU I have running here and an Expo kit from Corsair just cooled by a 280 AIO. So again, on this board, I'm running 0922, which is an older version that got taken down and I'm running Expo 1, so that's basically the only adjustment I did. So running 6000 C30, it's already applied as you can see on the right side, which also means that if we scroll down, SOC voltage is running 1.34 volt. And what I want to try now is I will just simply increase this a little bit further, starting with 1.4 volt and see if anything happens. Voltage is applied on readout, it's only 1.385, but at least the system is still alive. Next step would be 1.425, and I will just keep testing this in steps and see if something happens. I finally reached 1.5 volt, and that's the point where I will stop increasing the voltage. I mean, I don't have to kill the CPU on a voltage that's like unrealistic, because that's already a region that you should usually not reach with just running XMP. So instead I will go into Windows and at this setting just put some load on the CPU and see if anything happens. So from now I'm just starting to run Cinebench R23 even though I don't have much hope that something happens because it still seems to be a rather like a rare case. But I'm running 1.48 volt on the SOC which is again like an unrealistic high voltage. I guess typically between 1.35 to maybe max 1.4 is what you would see with some kind of XMP or like Expo, sorry about that, like Expo profile loaded. So yeah, I don't have much hope that anything happens, but I will just run this for like half an hour and then we will see. As expected, nothing happened. And I'm quite happy about that because I can keep the CPU and I can also keep the board because potentially it would damage both. But just to recap, I'm just happy that I again looked at my 7900X and then figured out that it's actually also affected, which then again means that it's not, not only X3D CPU, but also the normal Ryzen, because this could mean for you, for example, if Expo is the cause, well, not really Expo, but maybe SOC or higher SOC voltage, it could mean that you should maybe just double check the voltage if it's applied by auto and then maybe lower it to a self value, maybe 1.2 volt, just to be sure until we know more. So your CPU is safe. And I mean, if Expo is the cause, that could be a very interesting debate. It's the same for Intel, to be fully honest, because for years, if you look at this, like Expo and XMP, like all the parties, the CPU vendors and the mainboard vendors, all of them are happily advertising high memory speeds. But if something goes wrong, it's out of warranty, right? Because it's exceeding the memory clock. And yeah, if that's the case, then this certainly will become a very interesting debate for now. Maybe just to stay on the safe side, lower the SOC voltage, because it doesn't seem to be that simple. I will definitely look forward to Steve's material from the failure, failure analysis lab, but I just wanted to contribute that I just found the same kind of defect on my 7900X, which is not an X3D CPU, so it just opens this up for yeah, a broader thing, like different kind of errors, faults you could find in the CPUs and probably not related to like the 3D cache. And then again, probably not related to the core voltage and then also not to a single BIOS or single mainboard vendors and just like a bigger thing. All right. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.